to not play. That's my answer. That, that would be the, the easiest way to end all the Baltimore Ravens injury issues just simply for the team not to suit up and play. That, that's what it only seems like it could be like, right? But anyway, this first question on this episode of Question from Subs, it came from my guy, Ryan. He said, the way to instantly end injury issues for the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens need to stop weightlifting during the regular season. There is zero benefit. Weight training is designed to build strength. It takes months to achieve legitimate strength gains. These gains only happen in the offseason. During the season, they need to focus on muscular endurance and mobility. Hmm. Huh. There are ways to perform resistance training so you maintain what you've built in the offseason, but reduce the risk of injury during a grueling season. The recovery required after weight training is much more than what the regular season allows for. The trauma that players' bodies go through during the season is extreme. When you combine that with the recovery needed after free weight training, you are killing your central nervous system. The Ravens need to take a TB12 approach. To training during the season Wasn't there some illegal stuff in there? But anyway uh, Guys will be more fresh for game day And give their careers more longevity I guarantee it Oof. Hey you, you sound like you got a lot of experience uh, In weight training Because you ain't just saying any like, just general stuff You were breaking it down and getting very in depth Now um, If this is the case I hope the Baltimore Ravens are watching this Because we need to find something They got rid of Steve Saunders And a lot of people thought that Okay, hey, we're going to be straight now They brought in Adrian Dixon from the Titans They thought, hey, we're going to be straight now And they said that they were going to go over Every crevice and every nook and cranny of the team And turn over every rock To see exactly how they could fix this injury issue But they still continue to have this injury issue So Baltimore Ravens, if you listen to my guy Ryan Hey, take notes Next question came from my guy BB He said, when looking at this offensive line The importance of Tyler Linderbaum is self-explanatory Linder Flinder Ah, hey, you remember it, appreciate you He said, Ravens have dealt with the consistent absence of Ronnie Stanley For the past four years Like you said, the best ability is availability Uh, Ravens are going to have to make a decision Hopefully sooner rather than later On filling the left tackle position with a known veteran So this offense has time to make plays Nothing worse than seeing Lamar running for his life because of the inability to block. Lamar is only as good as his offensive line allows him to be. Uh, as for the defense, well, yeah, starting with that part, yeah, that it's, it's true, man. Uh, it, that a good offensive line makes everybody's job so much easier, and that's obviously easier said than done, but. It's true. Uh, now for defense, he said Kyle Hamilton is that guy, no doubt. As Ravens have big names on this defense, they need to start making big plays. It's early as of right now, but the adjustments have to be made for this team to make an actual run for playoff contention. Also, coaching has to be better in situational awareness and play calling. Hobbs got to step up his game. Thanks for the channel, fam. And hashtag team, keep it clean. And hashtag tie in up. Uh, and yeah, hey, that, that's what it's all about, making plays, making plays for sure. And Harbaugh did talk about the, uh, the situational awareness part uh, that was on him, and he knew it was on him uh, when it came to that, that the whole two-minute drill with the whole the, after the safety and the punt, and it, it was just a mess. But it's important to, that they learn from that. Everybody learned from all of their mistakes, not just coaching, but players and everything too. Uh, everybody learned from their mistakes, and they improve it moving forward. Next question came from my guy, Oreo Cookie. He said, hello, Engraven. So I love Zay Flowers, and he needs his flowers. I had originally predicted. Seven to eight hundred yards for the season, but here we are, three games in, and he almost has two hundred yards. So has your prediction gone up? Mine uh, has. I see one thousand yards. Ooh, that's that's something right there. Ah, uh, I don't know. I, I I think mine's is about the same. But with, with Zay Flowers, uh, they've been uh have, having him involved a whole lot, and they love Zay Flowers. And to think about it, they, there have been some opportunities that have even been missed, and he's still been putting up some solid numbers for a rookie uh, who's also on the same team as an Odell Beckham Jr., as a Mark Andrews, as a Rashad Bateman. Uh, so some guys that Mar- uh, Lamar Jackson would be more familiar with. But the fact that he's doing what he's been doing and now moving forward for now – Odell Beckham Jr. is out. Rashad Bateman is out. Uh, he's going to have even more opportunity. Next question came from my guy Jarvis. He said, tough, tough loss against the Colts, but I know we'll bounce back. Watching first take and Shannon Sharp made an interesting argument that I want your input on. Shannon says he doesn't see anything new under Tom Monken versus the coordinators we had in previous years. What are your thoughts? Oh, I heavily disagree. Uh, he said, other minor questions are, why do you think we can't stay healthy and win? And if fully healthy, how good can this team be? Oh, man, I... Uh, <laughs> Hey, why can't we stay healthy? That, that's the million dollar question. And if I had the answer to it, I'd have a million dollars. But I ain't got no million dollars, so I don't know. But back to your first question from Shannon Sharp. Yeah, I, I, I disagree. I, and I think that could just be media talk uh, just to sort of take a, not necessarily a jab at the Ravens, but 
just 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 a, a hot take, I guess. Um, but I, I disagree. This offense has looked much different. It has much, and just because it hadn't been successful against the Colts, it does not mean it didn't look a lot different. Uh, so we've seen the passing formations and whatnot. We've seen uh, the way that the Ravens have got different guys involved. Uh, we see that the way they got different receivers involved, uh, and just the way that uh, they run their plays and whatnot, the running plays themselves, uh, the way that Lamar Jackson has been moving has been just throwing that ball all over the field. We've seen big differences. Just because it wasn't successful in one game, it doesn't mean that it's the same old stuff. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are good. So the Jets seem to be in shambles and a lot of frustration. It got me thinking, why not trade for Hall? He's still in his rookie contract, frustrated, and they have Cook and Carter, and there's no telling when Hill and Edwards come back. What do you think? Oh, good timing for this question because now Hill and Edwards are both officially back. Next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, a few questions. You know I'm not a fan of McDonald's. Same thing as last year sitting in cover two getting picked apart lol but am i tripping or has he turned into wink the corner cover zero blitz on third and fourth lol wink aka mr send them all uh I, I think oh let me continue he said looking back at the Bengals game which is only one game but it showed me a lot uh remember years ago i said obj held more value than stanley Oh, you mean Orlando Brown Jr. You can't just be throwing OBJ around, especially when we got Odell on the team and then saying like there's OBJ. Oh, so you got to clear that up. But anyway, uh, back to McDonald. I, I think the reason that he's been sending them blitzes like that is because with four, they just can't get pressure. That's it. Um, now, the whole more value than Stanley, I mean availability. Like my guy uh, was just talking about, best ability is availability. And Ronnie Stanley, for a lot of times, he just hasn't been available. And it's been a year after year after. It's been, it's been going on like his entire career pretty much. Um, so... Yeah, that's that's an unfortunate truth, man. So hopefully moving forward, Ronnie Stanley can be healthy, but we'll we'll see. Uh, he said, well, week one, Lamar was getting abused. No shade to Stanley at all, but week two with a better pass rushers, Lamar was chilling. We could have paid OBJ half of uh, that and got picks for Stanley. I'm just saying. So if you could turn back the hands of time, who would you have paid? See, that's tricky because Ronnie Stanley really good. Um, but it, it, the timing, the timing was just really bad because he got paid. We all celebrating. Hey, Ronnie Stanley got his money. Yeah, let's go, baby. And he had missed some time before that, like in years before that. But he got paid. He was like, oh, yeah, he got his bread. And then literally the week later, not even a week later, it wasn't even a full seven days later. But right after he got paid, T.J. Watt ended up accidentally rolling up on him. And then that, that changed his career big time. Like, big time. So, it's just unfortunate how it worked out. And he said, uh, I was alarmed that Hill was our goal line back with Gus healthy, but I got it because he only comes in on clear passing downs. And if he runs, it's a pitch. So, nobody would be expecting a dive out of Hill. But, with this little nagging injury he has, do you think Keaton will get a few reps? Well, he got to come back first. Because, remember, he's on injury reserve. So, he has to miss the first four weeks. So, with him uh, missing these... I mean, he's still out right now. He's not on the roster. Uh, but he could possibly get an opportunity when he is eligible, which would be week five. Uh, and he said, and sad to say, the Ravens have been waiting for this moment with J.K. They drafted a J.K. 2.0 every year. I hope he can bounce back, though. But those injuries are starting to pile up. Shaking my head. That is true. He said, last but not least. Uh, the bros are looking good out there. Hopefully, Away can just rest some, which shouldn't be hard because Clowney is looking elite out there. So is Justin Matabike, aside from the terrible penalties nobody is talking about. But Matabike is putting together a bundle of great plays. It looks like he might play himself out of Baltimore. What do you think? I think that's a high possibility. I think that's a strong possibility. But the Baltimore Ravens really, really love Justin Matabike. So we're going to see. We, we, we definitely going to see. Uh, and with them paying Broderick Washington, and they kind of play two different positions. They have two completely different styles. Uh, we'll see. Um, and he said, and just how I was when they seen Lamar was fully healthy and wanted to get ahead of it by creating a fake narrative that he has the best wide receiver core in the NFL. I'm out. LOL. And P.S. Our guys are the best for us. And now let's hear from our wonderful team. Keep it clean. Patrons. First one is my guy, Kevin, who's been a patron for nine months. So I appreciate it, Kev. He said, put the ball on the ground three times. Missed field goal. Flowers with 203 uh, on the clock. Fair caught after the safety. He could have took the two-minute warning away. Uh, they only took 20 seconds off the clock after the fair catch. Mistake after mistake. I don't want to hear about the refs. There were clear missed calls, but it should not have come down to that. Two guys just signed, and Gus had a great game last week, but you don't feature him. John Harbaugh, seriously, tough loss on to Cleveland. On the other hand, play a nice play from uh, Kyle Hamilton, the strip sack. Jeremiah Moon uh, couldn't scoop and score. A lot of reasons we lost today, and the refs are not my concern. And I, I, I ain't mad at that at all, man. I, I had said it as well. I just, yeah, the refs did play a, a part at the end, but you, I, I can't put the game on them. Ravens had so many opportunities and so many opportunities, and then they had even more opportunities, but they still didn't close it out. You can't play like that moving forward. 
next question came from another patron, my guy Martin, who's been a patron for two years. So shout out to my guy Martin. He said, we lost that game because of conservative coaching. In my opinion, we always bring up the point of making everyone else's job easier. Well, John Harbaugh and Todd Munkin certainly did Justin Tucker no favors by getting as conservative as conservative gets. Running up the middle with 40-year-old running backs that go for no yards or negative yards instead of trying to make it a closer field goal, I thought, eh, Justin Tucker doesn't need any help. All he needed was like three more yards, but they were so worried about the Colts' offensive uh, offense that hadn't really done much other than the run game that they just gave the ball to the Colts' offense at midfield uh, that if they had just got four extra yards, they would have made that field goal. Well, yeah, it has been – it was it was ugly. It, it, it was very ugly. Uh, a lot of mistakes and miscues and errors and hiccups and problems and issues and all that bad stuff. That's why it's important. All right, it happened in week three. You got your loss out of it too. Even though even with all that stuff that they did wrong, so much stuff that they did bad, so much stuff that they needed to improve on, they still had so many chances to win. All right, you did that week three. Get it out your system. Moving forward, clean up the mistakes.